Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Footprints of Hope. Of course, our online evangelistic series is sponsored by the English-speaking territories of the Inter-American Division. Yes, Alan, and broadcasting live from Montego Bay, Jamaica. I am Denise Lawson Leslie alongside Alan Green. You know, I just would like to say that we do have another person who will be straightening the host line this evening. And oh, there yes. is a saying that only the best is good enough. Oh, amen. And I'm happy to introduce to you none other than the best from Grenada representing the Caribbean Union. And I want to welcome none other than the one and only Nicole, Nicole best. best. How are you, Nicole? Oh, thank you. Thank All right. you. I am fantastic. I am very delighted to be part of my, the team in Jamaica with my brother, Alan, and my sister, Denise. There you go. And as you rightly said, I'm representing the Caribbean Union, but... The Caribbean Union is not the only union participating in this event. That's right. We also have the Dutch Caribbean Union. Yes. We've got the Atlantic Caribbean Union. We've got the Jamaica Union, my brothers and sisters in Jamaica. And we've got the Belize Union. That's All right. these unions come together to make this event possible. Awesome. Not only that, we're not just broadcasting to a small audience. Oh no, if you've got friends in any part of the world, you can get them to tune in on YouTube, on Facebook, and they'll find us there. You've got the NCU TV on channels 188 and 618 on Flow Digital Network. You've got NCU Radio 91.1, three, that's 3 FM Jamaica. You've got Blessed TV, you've got WCCN, Local Adventist Radio and TV, Hope Beyond Net, and you also have it on floor here in Grenada. So let me tell you something, you have absolutely no reason not to call a friend and tell a friend to call a friend. Am I right, Alan? There we go. Yeah. You're simply the best. All right. We keep it going. You know, right after this series, we will be, which is tonight's service, we will be having the VIP room. We have the prayer points. We have the digital disciples. Of course, we are encouraging you to be di digital disciples. Go by two to win more than two in 2022. Share, like, and of course, subscribe. We're going to go right over now to the praise team. Sing with us. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Amen. The praise team. Amen. Looking back 
back in the past some centuries ago when you walked through the garden alone you left even then your footprints of hope to be followed by men down the road adam and eve yes they walked the path but so did they hopelessly found but you sent to save your four thousand years later so many young and old now can tell of your footprints of hope, footprints of love, footprints to follow when we've lost our way, footprints of life, footprints of truth. Lord, help us to walk in your way, in your footprints of hope, footprints of love. Footprints to follow and we've lost no way. Footprints of life, footprints of truth. Lord, help us to walk in your way, in your footprints of hope. In your footprints of hope. In your footprints of hope. Praise the Lord. This evening we do have someone who knows how to communicate and he communicates and of course he knows how to take us to the throne of grace through communication. I'm happy and pleased to introduce to you tonight none other than Pastor Roy Lindsay. He's a communication director of the Turks and Caicos Conference. Pastor, over to you. this evening for the many blessings that you showered down upon us throughout the day. God, we magnify your name because you have brought us through many dangers, toils, and snares, and we are alive tonight, and we are in this worship service to lift up your most holy name. God, I pray for everyone who would have joined us on the various platforms tonight. Lord, I pray that our friends, as they hear the gospel proclaimed tonight through your manservant, that all of us, dear God, including our visitors, will be closer drawn to you. God, I pray for the technology this evening that you will bless it. I pray for every participant that you will bless what they will do and that we will touch hearts for you. God, we put this service under your control. Let your Holy Spirit have his way now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. At this time, we will have our welcome by Pastor Eric Clark, the president of the North Bahamas Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. Thank you so much, my pastor, and good evening. Hello, everyone. Greetings and best wishes on behalf of the Footprints of Hope Walking with Jesus online gospel campaign. It's a delight to bid you welcome to an amazing and an incredible journey of hope with Christ, the evangelist, and a team of workers that you will absolutely enjoy. That's why I greet you in the name of Jesus this evening from the beautiful islands of the Bahamas. Yes, I said it, it's paradise. There are more than 27 countries involved in this wonderful evangelistic campaign that you're a part of and I'm a part of. And the reason why we're here tonight and why we're a part of it is because we love the Lord Jesus. We want to do everything that he wants us to do and we want to be saved in his kingdom. Am I right about it. The speaker evangelist is a brother and a friend. You know him as Evangelist Glenn Octavius, more names than you can count Samuels. He is an anointed evangelist and a preacher who is called by God. To hear him is to love him, and to love him is to follow Jesus all the way. He is 
preaching in the word. And I love the word. Don't you love the word? I'm glad that you are here tonight. The topic is the divine slide in your DM. I don't know what in the world he's going to talk about. Do you know? I don't know. And every night, there's a new and dynamic subject. So I'm excited tonight. I hope you're excited. Please tell somebody about it. In fact, even now, I want you to fasten your seatbelts. Take a hold on the promises of God. Hold on to the word of God. Get your family around you. Send the link to somebody else. And let's go for a walk in the footsteps and the footprints of Jesus Christ with evangelists Glenn Octavius Samuels. Welcome, everybody. Welcome in Jesus' name. We just, we just want to lift our voices in praise and worship. We're going to sing, praise him, praise him, Jesus, blessed Savior. He alone is worthy to be praised. Praise Him, praise Him, praise Him, praise Him. Jesus, blessed Savior, he's worthy to be praised. Come on and praise him. Oh, praise him. Praise him. Come on and praise him. Jesus. Bless the Savior, he's worthy to be praised. From the rising, from the rising of the sun, or to the going down, or to the going down of the same. God is worthy, he is worthy, Jesus is worthy, Jesus is worthy. Oh, it's worthy to be praised. Come on and praise Him. Praise Him. Come on and praise Him. Jesus. Jesus. Bless that Savior. He's worthy to be. Can we sing it again? From the rising of, from the rising of the sky, unto the going down, unto the going down of the sea. You same. believe that God is worthy? Lift your hands and say, Jesus is worthy. Jesus is worthy. Jesus is worthy. My God. He's worthy to, worthy to be. Come on and praise Him. Lift your hands and praise, praise him. him. Come on and praise, praise him. him. Oh, let us praise, praise Him. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus bless us, Savior. Bless us, Savior. Oh, He's worthy to be praised. Oh, Can 
you trust him? Yes, you can. You can always trust. Come on and praise him. Come on and praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Blessed Savior, He's worthy to be praised. Jesus, Jesus, blessed Savior, He's worthy to be praised. Sing Jesus, Jesus, blessed Savior. God, victorious, oh, risen Lord, he purchased our redemption, oh, righteousness is he. Come on, exalt the name of Jesus. He is worthy. Join and sing. He alone is worthy to worship God. The Lamb of God, victorious, our risen Lord, He purchased our Oh, Jesus, we 
This evening, we are placing the spotlight on the environment, global warming, deforestation, oil spills, forest fires, tsunamis, and fierce hurricanes have all contributed to the destruction of the environment. But this evening, I would like to transport you to sublime sunsets, water flowing from rocks, miles of white sand beaches, a wide variety of flora and fauna. Right now, you should be breaking out in praise to our Creator, for in the beginning, it was very good. Even after much damage, we still have access to air as breath, food and water to nourish ourselves, sunlight and chirping birds to heal our troubled minds, and darkness to promote quality sleep. We are fearfully and wonderfully made with trillions of cellular activity every second which responds to what we see, we hear, we taste and touch in our environment. There is new scientific evidence to prove that windows, plants, and natural sunlight greatly contributes to productivity, healing, longevity, and positive frame of mind. It is reported that the air in our homes is on an average 2.5 times more polluted than the air outside. The culprits, cleaning agents, insecticides, some personal care products and garbage. But here is some good news from NASA research. Living green and flowering plants like the peace lily, bamboo palm, and Chinese evergreen can remove toxins from the indoor air. So bring nature indoors. There's more. Why not spend some time to admire the plants and flowers in colors of green, yellow, red, orange. This, according to researchers, will quickly reduce their blood pressure, your pulse rate, and the brain that uplifts your mood. In closing, consider the words of Chief Seattle. We do not inherit the earth from our ancestors. We borrow it from our children. So become intentional about the space you occupy. Here are three tips to help make your environment a safer place for all of us. Think twice before dropping your garbage on the roadside, on the beach, and in the gullies. In fact, just bag it for the collectors. Number two, how about planting a tree as a reminder of this global health? pandemic. Number three, where possible, reuse, recycle, and bag it instead of burning it. God expects us to be good stewards of our environment. Do the right thing. Good evening. A generous person will prosper. Whosoever refreshes others will be refreshed. Our pray in Dutch first, followed by English. Let us pray. Lief de rijke God en Vader in de hemel en zij. Dankbaar zijn wij u voor uw liefde. We zijn u dankbaar voor uw genade. We zijn u dankbaar voor de vele zegeningen aan ons geschonken. Dankbaar, o Heer, dat wij terug kunnen geven aan u om het werk voort te zetten als wij gaan twee aan twee voor meer dan twee in 2022. Kind and loving Father, we thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. 
Thank you that we are able to give back to you as we advance your work, as we are focused and determined on breaking the evangelistic glass ceiling in 2022. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. was paralyzed by fear when they heard a mighty multitude was quickly drawing there but as they prayed for deliverance the victory would they gain for when we call upon the lord we summon all of heaven pray You face the lions worshiping the Lord. It seemed there was no hope at all for what would be in store. But when we stand on holy ground, our smallest prayer is heard. Instead of on our circumstance, our eyes are on the Lord. Pray on, for you are who the Lord is looking for. Pray on, for it's the will that old mighty strong holds down. Stay on your knees, for this is where the battle is won. There is soon you in the victory. Pray on. Your questions go unanswered, and your prayers may seem in vain. They don't seem to make a difference. They don't seem to make a change. Just rest assured, God knows your needs, and He hears each time you pray. Your prayers are reaching heaven. And your answers on the way. Pray on for you are who the Lord is looking for. Pray on for this will tell us mighty stronghold down. Stay on your knees, but this is where the battle is won. There's no better place for you to be than seeking the Father prayerfully. Very soon you win the victory. Pray on. Pray. Pray on indeed, pray on indeed. That is why we're going to be praying for uh, Jabari Pendergrass, who is in ICU at U University Hospital right now. We see that request. We're going to be praying for your request, uh, Norma Clark. We're going to be taking your request, uh, uh, Beverly Murray from Trinidad. All of you from Grenada, we're taking your requests from Belize. We're going to be praying for all of those requests for that Mother who is, in, who is not feeling well, the, the flu symptoms are there. We're going to be taking all those requests this evening because indeed it's good to pray on. We're going to be lifting all these requests before the Lord in special prayer. I want to remember you also, uh, Carolyn Coombs. We, are, we, we have noted your request 
We have noted your request, uh, Freddie Adolph. We have noted all those requests, and we are committing these in prayer right now. Won't you join me with an attitude of prayer as we go to him in prayer right now? Our Father, we praise and magnify you because you are a God like no other, dependable, reliable, one in whom we can place our confidence and trust. Immediately, Lord, we present these requests to you. Jabari Pendergrast in the University of the West Indies ICU. The requests coming in from Norma Clark, from Carlin Coombs, the requests from Beverly Murray from Trinidad. We commit the requests across the seas, across the Americas. Lord, you see all of them. We can't even identify each of them but you would have identified them and you know them. We commit all of those who are facing significant challenges because of the COVID-19 in respect of uh, ill health. We commit into your hands, Lord, those who have lost jobs. We commit into your hands those whose salaries have been reduced. We pray for those who are suffering because of violence and crime. We commit to you those suffering because of sexual abuse or abuse of one kind or another, which God's people must oppose categorically. And we ask that by your great and almighty power, you will touch hearts, soothe souls, deliver those in sin, from sin. Then, Father, we commit those who have not given Jesus their hearts as yet. They are on the platforms this evening, calling out to you, needing a transformation of heart, wanting you to touch those hearts, to, to break the chains and shackles that bind them to sin, but they don't know how to do so. We commit all these to you right now, Father. We commit the evangelist Glenn Samuels so that when he comes, we are asking not a double portion, but a triple portion of your spirit to take full charge, to, to brush aside evangelist Glenn Samuels and to lift up Jesus so that many souls will come to accept you as Lord and Savior. Father, there are so many other requests in the chat which we cannot mention now, but we ask you to let angels make a note of them. Write them down in your electronic, in your high profile, high end electronic, whatever it is, system of record and minister unto your people and deliver tonight. We ask these mercies in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Let all of God's people say, Amen. In holy pages, this truth can be found, a promise to stand on when darkness abounds. Oh, right never loses, wrong never wins. Grace will always be greater than sin. Grace will always be greater than sin. Calvary has proven its time and
you're broken and bruised from the choices you've made. Sin has a price that so often you pay. Oh, but Jesus, he is waiting. New hope is in him. And grace will always be. Wherever you've been, God's grace will always be greater than sin. Oh, grace, grace, my God's grace, grace. That is greater than your sin and my sin, all of our sins, whatever you've done and wherever you've been, God's grace, it will greater yes. than sin. Yes, had it yes. not been for grace. Wow. Somebody need to type in the chat. Thank you, Jesus, for grace. Amen. Awesome. 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 And uh, as we engage our viewers right now, I am uh, um, on South Bahamas Conference. Yes, I'm seeing you. Shad Is this Chandel, Swain, Alicia Ramin? And Anika Sturrup, I'm seeing you, and you're saying amen, amen, amen. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, let's swing over to the best, Nicole. Right here at your service. Let me ask you something, Nicole. Is it, is it snowing in Grenada right now? It <laughs> could very well be. It's that cold where I live. You know, Grenada's mountain is quite similar to Jamaica, not as large as Jamaica, don't get me wrong here. But where I live, it's on a mountain. And it's a tad bit nippy. It's been that way for the entire day and it continues into tonight. As a matter of fact, it's raining outside. Wow. All right, it's raining here in Montego Bay. Oh, it's yes. Oh, yes. yes. And I tell the you rain is good. I count it as showers of blessing because when the rains come down, the flowers come up. Bless the Lord. Yes, Bless the Lord. That's right. And I tell you, um, Nicole, it is awesome here. And we really, I, I mean, we are engaging our viewers, our online viewers, and they are really blowing up the chat. And we want you to, we encourage you to send in your prayer requests. Ensure that you send in those prayer requests early, you know, so that we can have them printed. We can give them to the minister, the evangelist. And, you know, we can pray. We can petition God's throne yes. on your behalf because God is good. He answers prayers. That's right. Nicole, oh, yes, he does. Like he does. No prayer this? is too small or too big for that matter. Indeed. Indeed. You know, we just want to welcome those on Radio Land, those who are listening to the various local radio stations right now. Yes. And we just trust that right there in your, wherever you are in your home, uh, in the office, in the car, you know, that the fragrance of heaven will really saturate your hearts tonight. And that you Amen. will have a rich experience 
with Jesus. That's what it's all about. Footprints Amen. of Jesus. Amen. Over to you, Nicola. Well, I want to continue. You, were, you go ahead, Alan. You were telling me something. All right. All right. And uh, I tell you, we just want to uh, let everybody know that they are welcome this evening. So if you're just joining us, you are logging on to the Footprints of Hope, Walking with Jesus, online evangelistic series. And we just want you to engage with us, whatever platform you are on. Ensure that you subscribe, like our Facebook um, pages as well. And remember, share the link, be the minister of the gospel gospel share that link be a digital right. disciple That's and share right. that right. link god's word must go forth because this is the end time message That's for right. our end time amen. people and That's all right. people are god's people amen well amen and can i add here please don't just run away right after stick around and enter the vip room pastors waiting there to chat with you you know the room it's called vip very important person and that's you yes. please be sure to go into the vip room right after the service that's right denise amen well we go right over now to the praise team let's keep it sweet as we sing to the honor and glory of god the praise team When mine eyes behold the stars, this heart of mine is filled with wonders. My poor mind could not grasp their array. But the hands that play them there all across the wide heavens had a plan when when he placed them that way no no lead to him are the great so I fear not the darkness when my flame grows dim. I know not what the future holds, but I know who holds the future. Of fear and doubts, John on my knees, I ask one question, why there's no only heavy cross I must bear. But Jesus tells me in my prayer, child, it's because you are trustworthy he gives me strength far more than my say no no lead to him are the great hidden secrets so I fear not the time your knees you'll ask one question God 
why this lonely heavy cross I must bear but Jesus tells you in your prayers child it's because you are trustworthy he gives you strength for the future holds but I know who holds the future and in case you're wondering what your tomorrow will be like put your hand in the hands of the man who still the waters he knows your yesterdays your todays and your tomorrow I welcome you this evening I welcome you with the joy of the Lord welcome from the US from Canada from Africa from the islands of the sea from as far east and as far west it is our joy to tell you that you are the best. It's good to have you in the place. And I want to tell you that if there's any night you should be absent, it should have been tonight. But you can't miss tomorrow night. Tomorrow evening, we shall take special time out just to pray for you, whether your problems are physically, emotionally, or spiritually are connected. Whatever be your problems, tomorrow night, we'll take special time out. It's going to be our prayer night. It's going to be our miracle evening as we intercede at the throne of God for an answer for your particular situation. And so you can't be absent tomorrow evening. As a matter of fact, I want to ask you to hook up your neighbor. I want to thank you, all of you, for calling your friends. 
Oh, I am so blessed to know that you're praying for the old man and the old man is praying for you too. I get calls from across the U.S. and across Canada and from across the Caribbean of folk wanting to pray with me and some uh, just texting. And I want to assure you that we are praying for you too. I want to tell you that every night in the VIP room, we run out of time. So here's what I'm going to ask you. In order to allow all of your friends who are connected each night, you're going to have to make the comments very short. And I know some of you desire a Bible study, but we can't do the Bible study in the Zoom room. We will arrange to have the Bible studies done with you. And so we are so glad you take the time to connect with us in that VIP room. We appreciate your openness. And so tonight I want to assure Beverly over on the eastern side of our prayers. Tonight we want to assure all those who have been affected and infected by COVID regardless of the variant. We are praying God's healing hand over your life. and We are appealing to you to do your best to protect yourself and protect your family. Tonight we are praying for those who have lost their loved ones uh, suddenly or from sustained illness. We pray God's comforting and consoling arm around you. But tonight we are able, in spite of the challenges, to testify of God's goodness to us. And so, whether you are contorted in grief or sorrow, you're still here. And we thank God that your life is still spared. And you can testify that all of your life, He's been faithful. Can I take one last second? and give a shout out. I love to talk to my friends, those who are watching from the screen. It rained in some parts of Montego Bay. So I don't know if it's raining in Greenvale uh, by the screen. Shout out to you there by the screen in Greenvale. Whether you're watching from your car or watching from the veranda, the edge of your house, I want to shout out to you down in Petersfield, watching by the screen. Those over in Berry Islands and Abaco, those listening to me live and direct on Cayman Radio, those in Belize and Grenada, those in Trinidad, Bus of Shotroti, all across Tobago, are you listening to me? It is our joy to be together with you. We praise the name of the living God. I spoke to someone today and they told me it was cold where they were in Toronto. But hey, let's get in the warmth of the goodness of God, for He is good to all of us. Are you ready? Let's join the praise team and testify of the goodness of God. Welcome, Dr. Archer. Good to see you in the place tonight. Welcome back, Dr. Smith. Until I lay my head down. Until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of, the goodness of, God. of God. Come on and sing the song now. Your goodness is running, running after, after me. Yes. It's running after me. It is. Can you sense it? Can Your you feel it? Your goodness is running, running after. after. It's running after me. Well, Loving Father in heaven, bless your words now to our hearts. We thank you for your protecting care as we travel back and forth. We thank you for your protecting hand even over the instruments and over each platform. We ask for your continued divine intervention. We praise your name for the participants each night across the world. Oh, blessed God, speak again tonight. Touch this sinful, wretched lump of mortal clay for the preaching that is necessary for the glory of your name. 
May some heart some way be drawn even closer into full surrender. And as we plan and pray for baptism this weekend, there are thousands of people around the world. Some used to walk with your Jesus and they've drifted. There are those who have never surrendered to you. But oh God, I pray tonight that your Holy Spirit will have his way. May victory come to a former member. May salvation come to a backslider. Oh God, may conviction and conversion come to that young man, that young lady listening right now, watching right now on his or her smartphone. May your will be done and your kingdom come. We pray in Jesus' name and let God's children say, Amen. You know, I, I love happy people. I do get miserable sometimes, but don't watch my ugly face. I love happy people. And today I learned that it is the happy anniversary of one of our singers in the group. Yes, one member of the uh, anointed ones will be specially anointed tonight. Today is her husband's birthday, and today is their anniversary. And I want to say happy birthday to my friend, Sir Troop, and happy anniversary to the troops this evening. May there be a full troop of love this evening. And I want to give her permission to leave, but not right now. She has to sing for me at the end. <laughs> I go and behave myself, don't you know that? Our subject tonight, and I have to explain. Before I get into that, I got a text today. There, there are some senior members, and I want to tell you I am in that senior club, don't you know? They want to find out. Okay, so, so, so when they share the link, they, they ask me, what happened? Well, I'm glad you asked. Thank you for the text. When you share the link, it means that the person you share the link with is able to join the service live and direct. And I want to share, ask you, share it with all the persons around town, uptown, downtown, and round town. And then they ask, what does it mean to subscribe? Well, it doesn't mean that you're paying anything. There's a little word on your phone or on your iPod or your computer computer uh, right beside the West Jamaica link or whichever platform you're joining from it is in red now JJ Johnson said if it is if the word is red your subscription is dead so as long as it's red it means that you won't be able to get the live alert of the meetings so click on that red word that said subscribe if it turns to gray it means you're on your way. If it looks close to white, it means you're all right. So click on the word that says subscribe. What it means is that every time the platform that you're subscribing to, whether it's West Jamaica, East Jamaica, Belize, Trinidad, wherever, ever, beyond, hope beyond, when you click on that red word, it means that every time the program gets online, you will be notified. All righty? So click on the word and share the link. So together we can prepare the world for the coming of the Lord. I got a call. You know, I, I, I know I'm taking my preaching time. But let me tell you this. I got a call from somebody. Someone shared the link with her. And she drove three and a half hours in cold, cold snow in Connecticut to be baptized. Because somebody shared the link with her. She called me elated and jubilant. And I want to thank you. Somebody you who shared the link. And to all the other somebodies, share the link right now. I'm going to pause for you to do that. I'm going to give you 30 seconds right now to, to click on that. Share the link. Send it far and wide. There's a word tonight for somebody. And while you're doing that, our, our subject tonight simply wants to convey to you that God has a word just for you. Our topic is the divine slide in your DM. So let me, let me tell you what they told me, right? Let me tell you what they told me. They told me that, that you can communicate in a crowd, you know, you, you're chatting in the crowd, but when someone wants to send you that love message or that special message, they, they slide right into your personal page, into your inbox. They slide right in there and you can't miss it. You know, stuck on you. Well, well, I'm going to behave myself tonight. They slide right in there in your personal inbox to send you a message just for you. Well, God is going to slide right into your personal DM tonight. He speaks to nations. 
He speaks to the world. He communicates awesome messages, sometimes a fiery judgment. He delights in love and mercy, and though he brings salvation to the whole world, we are familiar with that text in John 3, 16 that says, For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish. For God so loved the world, the message is designed for the whole world, islands and continents, but he has a special word just for you. Society is plagued with what psychiatrists call the herd instinct. They say that there's hardly any individual thinking anymore. We are, we are moved sometimes by the crowd. And, and even in this pandemic, they, they talk about herd immunity. They talk about protection from the crowd and, and, and with the fact that, that whether by vaccination or by natural immunization or by uh, COVID immunization, they talk about the herd immunity. The herd instinct is not just peer group pressure that Gen Zers and Gen Ys struggle with, but, but listen to me, businessmen and professionals and intellectual giants sometimes struggle with this issue of the herd instinct, the herd instinct. There is an apparent, there is an apparent barbaric behavior that sometimes find its way even on social media. We can trend stuff that's not always positive. Whether on Twitter or Instagram, you know, many times the stuff that's trending aren't always positive. And depending on the breadth and width of your social media following, one negative statement can impact millions of persons. The devil in his devilish ideology has succeeded in messing up the lives of many persons. A favorite statement of hurting people, I have heard it, I have sat in council with them when they're hurting, particularly for those who try their best and discover that after doing their best, their marriage still failed. After doing their best at the job, they still miss that promotion that they wanted so badly. After doing their best, they still discover it has not worked out. And so sometimes a favorite statement of hurting people is this. Don't tell me anything about God. You may have read Philip Yancey's book, Where is God When I Hurt? A friend in England bought me a book, book entitled, Hurt People, Hurt People. The book is entitled, is, is saying that many times hurting people end up hurting other people. There is a divine slide in your DM. In the midst of a hurting, broken world, in the midst of a universal call for salvation, in the midst of the universal offer of salvation, God has a special word for you. In the midst of your brokenness, in the midst of the misery, in the midst of liquid frustration, wetting your pillow and you can't see through your dim eyes, eyes dim with tears, God has a word designed just for you. I love the book Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 21. In the midst of the confused maze, in the midst of the meandering streets and the complex stuff, the word of God in Isaiah 30 and verse 21 says, Thine ear shall hear a word behind thee saying, This is the way, walk ye in it. In the midst of a broken world, when your emotions get the better of you, when sorrow and grief comes crashing down like a mighty thunder on the horizon of your delicate sensibilities, God, in the midst of the noise, in the midst of the rough and tumble, thine ears shall hear a word behind thee saying, this is the way. I'd like to tell you that 
The sensitive nature of your spiritual ears determine the quality of your... You, you, how sensitive you are to God. How attuned your ears are. How attuned your mind is. The sensitive nature of your spiritual ears determine the quality of your discipleship. A disciple can be made of any person from any culture. The God brings salvation to all people. I'm a member of the Judeo-Christian faith. That's my worldview. And I believe with all my heart there's only one Savior. And the love of God embraces all people of all culture. There's only one Redeemer. The book of God says there's only one mediator between God and man. And he is Christ Jesus. He sends the word to everyone. Sometimes God has a hard time getting our attention because of the crowd and the herd instinct. I want to pick some characters tonight as we walk through briefly their story. The preacher tonight wants to make one fundamental point. It is simply this, that God speaks to the world, but he speaks to you individually. The preacher warns to say tonight that God brings hope and healing and salvation to the whole wide world, but he has a plan with your name written on it. There's an answer in heaven waiting on a prayer that you have not yet prayed. Listen to me carefully. There's a welcome mat at the door of mercy with your name written on it. He speaks to the world, but he's sliding a message right into your inbox tonight. He loves the world, but he loves you. The preacher would have you understand tonight, in our birth, we are registered. We become a part of the nation's statistics. Regardless of the nation you belong to, your birth has been registered. When you go to school, you are registered. When you go to hospital, you are registered. But I stop by to tell you, while they count that there are seven plus billion of us, while they count the number in your country and the number in your city and the number in your community, you are not just a number, but you have been numbered. Can I talk with you? You are not just a number. You are not just statistics. But you have been numbered. Oh, I want to talk to you tonight. Hear me carefully. Dr. Luke, who knows about registering patient. Dr. Luke, who, who know about seeing a number of patients. I don't know what system they use in his time. But he said in Luke chapter 12 are you with me he said in Luke the 12th chapter I'm going ahead of myself you are not just a number but you are numbered by God he said now I love the Bible he said but even even the very hair of your head Lord have mercy seven point something billion but God wants you to know you are not just statistics you are not just a number but he numbered you he knows exactly where you are even in the midst of your hurt in the midst of your brokenness in the midst of your backsliding ways in the midst of your hostility towards God he numbers even the hair on your head so when I comb my hair at least what's left of it whichever one falls out of these God knows that that's number 1176 he you are so special, nobody else has your fingerprint. That's how special you are. When the devil messes up your life, like Job, when folks say to you, don't bring God in the picture. Job's wife said, 
Why don't you curse God and let him kill you? He's not hearing you anyway. He's not helping you anyway. Every day, from morning till night, your life is a mess. I'm sick and tired of smelling the stench of death while your body is decomposing and your mind is alive. Curse God and let him kill you. Job said, you speak foolishly. You speak foolishly. And the Lord God says, he numbers even the hair on your head. That's how special you are. When God gave you birth, he gave nobody else your fingerprint. He gave nobody else your DNA. Are you listening to me? That's how special you are. He's sliding the message right in your DM. I don't care what the devil in hell has done to you. I don't care what the devil in hell is doing to you. You are so special to God. Hear me, young man. Hear me, young lady. Nobody else has your fingerprint. Nobody else has your DNA. That's how unique you are to God. I mean, you don't understand me. Sometimes we make the devil think that he's more powerful than God. But I wanted to wriggle your tail in the devil's face. No, no, no. Look in the mirror. Pick up your phone. Maybe it's night, but I'm sure. Turn on the light on your phone. Put the light in your face and say, devil, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Maybe broken, but I'm blessed. Maybe sick, but I'm blessed. Maybe jobless, but I'm blessed. COVID positive, but I'm blessed. I'm still here. I'm still here, devil. I'm still here. Hallelujah. I'm blessed. You're special to God. He sends a message to the whole world, but he's sending a message custom made for you. He's sliding right in your DM. He's sending the message right in your personal inbox. But he'll give all of heaven for your salvation. Oh, one gospel writer puts it this way. In all our affliction, he is afflicted. He is touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Devil is a liar. The devil would have you think that when you're hurting, God is far away. Can I really talk with you? There are times when I want to roll up my fists and go in the boxing ring with God when I can't understand him, when I can't see his hand. But truth is, our hands are too short to box with God. And when we are true, you know, I, I love Job, when we are through quarreling and complaining. Well, Job said, cursed be the man who carried the news to my father that a man child was born. Cursed be the day that I was born. He was going from one day of affliction to another. But in Job 19, 26, he said, I know that my Redeemer lives. And though after my skin, worms destroy this body yet in my flesh. I shall see God. Yet, that word Y-E-T, based on the Oxford Dictionary, it simply means making a virtue out of necessity. Making the best of a bad situation. It is God who is enabling you to do that. Are you listening to me? But, but I have to tell you, be mindful of the dangers of a negative crowd. The social media generation, sometimes in the trending stuff, moved off track. And sometimes all it takes is just one person to drop a negative salacious stuff there and it is gone trending on Instagram, uh, uh, on, on, on all of the popular social media space. And many times the persons who are feeding it haven't got a clue as to what the truth is. But I tend to tell you this, there's a story in my Bible just like that. Can I take you to Luke 23? What book did I say? Luke 23? I haven't forgotten my subject, the divine slide. That's a topic in your DM. Our subject tonight is dealing with God's special care just for you. 
Our message tonight is dealing with God's offer of salvation just for you in the midst of your situation. Luke 23, you see a social media crowd in this response. Luke 23, 23, it was a trial of a special prisoner. The wonderful thing is that he's a kind-hearted soul. He fed the hungry. He had compassion on the multitude. But now, some liars spoke against him. He was arrested, dragged to the judge, and the crowd began sending the stuff on their social media page. And they were instant with loud voices requiring that he might be crucified and the voices of them and of the chief priests prevailed. Now, 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 hush your fuss, hush your fuss. Christ is on trial. I'm talking about the herd instinct. I am speaking here of the danger of a negative crowd. I'm speaking here to you about the issue that you ought to be careful which crowd you follow. The judge was Pilate. He examined the prisoner. He took up the rule book and he said, I have examined him from the laws of the country and I find no fault in him. He then sent him to Herod. Herod sent him back to Pilate. But the crowd, the platform was trending. The statement on the Instagram page was trending. The statement on their Twitter page was trending. Crucify him. Two words. Two words on Twitter. Two words in WhatsApp. Two words on IG. And the whole world picked it up. Crucify him. Crucify him. And the man in the crowd, he didn't even know who was to be crucified. The next one didn't know why. He was to be crucified. They just pick up the refrain, the herd instinct, hardly any individual thinking. And the crowd moved the judge to abandon justice to satisfy the crowd. The crowd moved the judge. The judge was moved by the crowd to abandon the principles that he knew he should follow. The judge was moved by the crowd to abandon the straight path he knew he should walk in because the voice of the crowd prevailed. And Pilate lost the very position he thought the crowd would help him secure. Careful how you follow the crowd. In Matthew 7, 13 and 14, Jesus said, enter ye in at the straight gate. That word straight is not spelled S-T-R-A-I-G-H-T, meaning a straight line. It is spelled S-T-R-A-I-T, means difficult, requiring some individual thinking. You've got to have spinal tenacity. You've got to have intestinal fortitude. You've got to have your mind wrapped tight. You've got to get to the place where you know what's valuable for your salvation and regardless of what the crowd says in this broken world. Hear the preacher, hear the preacher. Enter ye in at the straight gate. We don't like difficulties. Like water, we like the path of least resistance. And that's why sometimes young people, drug use becomes like a runaway train. Just one person saying, try it. And another said, I've tried it. And the crowd prevail. And before long, you get hooked. You get trapped. Before long, you've lost your self-worth. You've lost your self-esteem. You are spitting on your dignity. You are wallowing your honor in the dust of time. And, and you get to the place where you can't stand to look in the mirror. All because of the voice of the crowd. 
It happens to young people. It happens to young professional. It happens to middle-aged person. It even happened to old people. The voice of the crowd because we fail to stand up on our own two feet. Sometimes we fall into this dependency syndrome. We depend on somebody else for money to go to school. We depend on somebody else for the car we drive. We depend on somebody else for the stuff we think we can't live without. And we sacrifice our very salvation because of that dependency syndrome but hear me the world as it is can't last much longer so Pilate lost his position what about Herod I wish I had time to tell you Herod read the historian and they tell you Herod was eaten with worms before he died it's dangerous to reject the one savior whom God sent to a broken world. Hear me, young people. It's dangerous to think that there is more life in a pleasure, mad life, than in Jesus Christ. Herod was eaten with worms. Here comes Paul, this brilliant intellectual biblical giant who was sold out to Jesus. Paul summarizes his life into one line. Philippians 1 verse 21, he said, For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. What a life. To live is Christ. Every day of his life, he opened his personal DM. He opened his personal inbox to a message from God. Because he knew, he knew that in a broken world, we need a word from one who is wiser than the sons of earth. In a broken world, we need a word from one who's altogether lovely. And so, here is Acts 26. Paul stands before the man who was trying him. Paul was never afraid in the midst of the crowd to slide a message into Agrippa's personal DM. Paul, in speaking to the crowd, he turns to Agrippa and he said, King Agrippa, King Agrippa, do you believe the prophecy? It's, he's on trial now. He's addressing the world. But hear me, members of God's family. You have a divine responsibility. Are you listening to me? God has no secret agent disciple. So Paul said, Agrippa, I have a personal word for you. Do you believe? Agrippa said, Paul, almost almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian Agrippa King Agrippa when you look at the text in Greek he's saying in so short a time you've almost convinced me to be a Christian in so short a time your life is on trial but in so short a time, you almost persuade me to be a follower of Jesus Christ. And Paul said to him, King Agrippa, I wish to God that like myself, you were not just almost, but altogether persuaded. And I want to say tonight to a young man in the corner, a young lady at work, a businessman by his desk. There are some things in this life that position and power can deliver. There are some things in this life that pleasure cannot produce. There are some things in this life that not even pain can prevent. And so tonight, God has a message for you. In spite of how you feel, in spite of your present circumstances, 
whether it's pleasure or pain, whether it's powerful or you're powerless, whether you are uptown or downtown, whether you are an intellectual giant or you are academically challenged, God has a word for you. God has a word for you. You there, Mr. Prime Minister. You there, Madam President. You there, Your Majesty. You there, Mr. President. You there, Vice President. You there, Mr. Congressman. God has a word for you. Turn back the hands of time and see when Stalin and Brezhnev flex their fist in power. Turn back the hands of time and see the iron chariots of the mighty Pharaoh. But they lay dead now in their mausoleum. They lay lifeless now in their expensive tombs. And like you, they once wielded the hand of power. Listen to me, Mr. President. Hear me, Mr. Prime Minister. Hear me, Mr. Businessman. Like you, rulers of past generation, their pen signed death warrants. Their pen signed promotion and dismissal. But where are they now? Your position will not last forever. God is sending a word right into your personal page. He speaks to nations. But tonight, sir, on the street corner, in your palace, the almighty God is speaking to you. In the midst of pleasure or pain. And I know sometimes the devil clouds our vision. The devil does the dirty work. Hear me, young man. He'll make you lose the job. He'll make you lose your car. He'll make you lose your friends. He'll make you lose the things you think you can't do without just so you can blame God. And in the midst of all of that, God is the only power that can lift your life out of the wreck it is in. I have a word for you tonight. It's not a word for the world. God sliding into your DM a message of hope. He said, thine ears in the midst of brokenness, thine ears shall hear a word. In the midst of confusion, in the midst when your money is acting funny and your business is getting all in trouble, thine ears shall hear a word saying, this is the way. In the midst of COVID mess, thine ears shall hear a word said, give me thine heart and I'll give thee thy, my father's kingdom. In the midst of your brokenness, thine ears shall hear a word saying, I will heal you of all your diseases. You may be on the job right now when you're saying, preacher, my heart is aching. I hear you, preacher, but you don't know where I've been. You don't know what I'm going through. A young man had a gun to my head. We sat beneath God's open sky. And when I tell him, you don't have to do what you're doing, he said, sir, you don't know what rough life is. Sat him down together. We sat beneath God's open sky. Told him, I walked to school barefooted. I walked to school without breakfast and lunch. Told him the journey of my life. And he, he and I became good friends. And I watched him walk to the altar. God has a word for you. He's preaching in New York City. The United Nations children's director came by the tent. God slid a word right into his personal DM. Listen to me carefully. God speaks to crowd. He speaks to uptown people. He speaks to downtown people. And whoever you are, there's power in the blood of Jesus. There's power. There's power, sir. And sometimes the problem with you is that the powerful circle that you're in, you find it hard to serve God. Agrippa lost his throne. Felix lost his power. Herod lost his power. Breshnev lost it. Listen to me. There's a word from God just for you. 
I may not be God's first voice to you, but I could be God's last voice to you. Listen to me, young man. A car crashed into the NCU college gate and the security man in grief screamed out, inside the car are young people. Gen Zers, if you please. But the car burst in flames and they couldn't get out. He sees them screaming for life. They're banging for help, but he couldn't get near to help them. And with all the love in his heart, he could do nothing more than to watch them die. God has a word for you. He's sliding a word in your personal DM. He's sliding a word in your inbox. He's sliding a word into your personal page. He speaks to nations, but the message tonight has your name written on it, backslider. Hear me, former member. The message tonight has your name written on it. He speaks to nations. He knows who you are. He knows where you are. How do I know he's speaking to you? Let me jump to Isaiah chapter 42. Isaiah chapter 42. Jump with me quickly. Verse 5. Thus said the Lord God, he that created the heavens and stretched them out, he that spread for the earth and that which cometh on it. God, you know, something just jumped in my mind. Every now and then, you have need of a specialist. When your regular doctor can't help and you ask about specialists and you want to know how he can help. So you ask, who has he helped? What has he done? How has he done it? Well, here is God in order to tell you that he can handle your situation. He said, thus said the Lord God. The one who created the heavens stretched them out by the power of his hand. He stepped out on the balcony of nothing with nothing above him and nothing below him and nothing around him and he spoke to nothing. He pushed his hand in the bosom of darkness and pulled light out of it. And God wants to send a personal word to you. But before he sends the word, he's providing his resume. He's providing his certificate. He's putting on your desk. He's making an application to manage your life. Thus said the Lord God, the one who made the heavens, who stretched them out, who spread out the earth and all that cometh up on it, are you listening to me? That's verse 5. We go to verse 6 and come on and run with me. The Lord have called you in righteousness. Hallelujah. I told you he knows your name. I told you you may be a statistic, but for God, you're more than just a number. I told you you are so special to God. Nobody else has your fingerprints. Nobody else has your DNA. Thus said the Lord, I have called you. I am calling you. I will hold your hand. I will keep you. I will even give you as a covenant. Lord, let me explain this to you. Have you ever been among some people and they feel you're done for? They feel you're worthless? They feel you're good for nothing? They write you off? Well, God says, listen, you are just the kind. You're just the kind that I want to work with. Have you ever been so powerful that folk don't know that you are hurting on the inside well God says you're just the kind up there or down here over there or over here you're just the kind and he said listen listen I I the Lord God I the one who stretched out the universe I the one who spread out the earth I will hold your hand and when the world thinks you're done for I'll do some stuff with you I'll pick you up I'll brush you off I'll clean you up I'll make you a royal diadem I'll give you as a covenant for the people a light to the Gentiles 
I'll make you a testimony. Can I run? Can I run? Can I run to my favorite text and I'm done? I'm done. Can I run to my favorite text in Isaiah? It's Isaiah 43, 1 and 2. Isaiah 43, 1 and 2. But now, not yesterday. Yesterday, you were halting and dilly-dallying. Yesterday. But God says, now, right now. But now, when you think you can get up, when you've been so low that getting up is never on your mind, when you've been so broken and so messed up that you stop believing in yourself and you start cursing God, the same God says, but now, right now, but now, thus said the Lord God. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. Fear not, for I have called you by your name. Hallelujah. The king might not know your name. The president might not know your name. The prime minister might not know your name. They might not know where you live. They might not know how hungry you are, how broken you are. They might not know right now that you have a flat screen television in every room. But inside your house, all you have is untelevised colored catastrophe. They might not know you have wall to wall carpet, soft carpet in your house. But all you have is wall to wall confusion. They might not know that your fridge is full of food. But your heart is empty. They might not know, but you're married, but you're still lonely. They might not know you're in a crowd, but you feel alone. But now, thus said the Lord God, I have called you. I have called you. I'm calling you by your name. Don't be afraid. I'm calling you by your name. You are mine. And he uses a pair of opposites to assure you that there's nothing that have happened. There's nothing that is happening. There's nothing that can happen that God can't deal with. He uses a pair of opposites to represent any and all the challenges you can or will face. He uses flood and fire. So he said, when you pass through the waters, even before you get there, he's telling you, don't be afraid of the waves you're going to go through. When you pass through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, it shall not burn you. Flood on one side, fire on the other side. Well, God is saying he is good in either medium or both media. He can handle this, that, and the other. That's a word tonight. He sends a word of assurance in your DM. He sends a word in your personal page. He's sending a word with your name written on it. He's saying you don't have a sin that the blood of Jesus can't handle. You don't have any brokenness that he can't mend. I have one more and I'm done. It's the one I started with. Isaiah chapter 1. Come now. Come now. Broken. Come now, hurting. Come now, feeling wretched. Come now, your business is falling apart. Come now, your school seems distant and your education seems like a pipe dream. Come now, Gen Zers, come now. Gen Ys, come now. Gen Xers, come now. Baby booming old age, come now. Let's reason together. Though your sins be a scarlet. Though the stuff that you have caused on yourself and the stuff others cause on you 
or dyed deep in ugly stains. Come, let's reason together. The world as it is can't fix it for you. The world as it is can't last much longer. Come now. The world as it is with runaway COVID. The world as it is with social injustice and moral depravity. The world as it is with broken dreams and broken hopes and broken marriages and broken lives. This God says, come now. I can make you whole. There's nobody who can do it for you like God. And so I want to ask you right now while they sing, fill that card out, I'm done. Make that decision. Former members, God wants you back. He said, backsliding children, come back to me and I'll heal your backslidings. I'm done. The word with your name on it. There's a call for baptism with your name on it. Listen to me, sir. Hear me, young lady. Hear me, ma'am. I don't care what the devil in hell is telling you. There's a word for baptism tonight, and God has your name on the list. Scan that QR code. Scan that QR code. Fill out the decision card. Fill out the card. Fill out that card tonight. You've wandered from the fold. You've drifted from God. Come on back. God does not need a whole week to save you. I speak tonight first of all. To a son, a daughter, a husband, a wife, a mother, a father, a businessman, a congressman, a prime minister, a member of parliament, a parish councillor, a police officer, a doctor, a nurse. Whether you are in Jamaica, Belize, Trinidad, Barbados, Tobago, Cayman Islands, Grenada, whether you are in Canada, the US of A, Africa, or India, Australia. Wherever you are tonight, if you've wandered from the fold, hear the voice that entreats you. Don't be like Agrippa. Don't be like Agrippa saying, almost, almost. I pray tonight the Lord God will make you all together convinced. He sends a message to the world, but he's sliding right into your DM. He sends the word to the world, but he's sending a word to you as an individual. Come now, let's reason together. Don't die in your sins. Don't die a wanderer. Don't die a stranger from God. Don't die in a state of hostility. Don't die. Don't die in a state of hostility. Let the Lord God be your guide. Thine ears shall hear a word behind thee saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it. The devil will try to block even the vehicle bringing the gospel to you. We leave it in the hands of God tonight. Greater is the living God than the power of evil. There are persons praying around the world and we ask them as they pray, even to pray for this platform right now. Our heads are bowed. Our eyes are closed. And if you are in a physical space, there is a pastor there, there's an elder there with a card, a decision card for you. They want to encourage you to make that decision to serve the Lord God. Oh God, our Heavenly Father, 
we come tonight in the name of Jesus Christ we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities against the powers of darkness against the powers of evil we ask Almighty God that tonight you will release battalions of angels to every platform carrying the gospel but we ask you blessed God to fight against the power of evil that's trying to even attack this platform even while I pray we ask you blessed God that you would dispatch your holy angels send your Holy Spirit to rebuke every evil heart that's trying to come against your plan and your purpose give the wind a mighty voice hold the devil in check tonight for the glory of your name rescue that young man that young lady that businessman that person right there God that wanderer from the fold that gentleman right now who knows he need to make a decision for salvation this coming Saturday the 22nd day of January the first month of this year oh blessed God let it be a turning point in the lives of countless thousands blessed be your name may your will be done and your kingdom come we ask in Jesus name we're so glad you've joined us tonight I want to thank you for your company fill out that card scan that QR code make that decision for eternal salvation and I'll see you in a little while in our VIP room but I want to ask all our prayer warriors all of our prayer counselors all 30,000 of you wherever you are from and the special 3,000 pray for this platform tonight pray for this platform tonight the devil is a liar he's been trying to create all kind of hiccups and there are those who are acting as his agents but the part of God is only a prayer away are you listening to me and so we thank you for joining us tonight and I want to remind you this coming weekend is your baptism you've been summoned by God for a changed life a new beginning a new start don't let the devil blindfold you put your hand in the hands of the Lord God he sends a personal word to you tonight he will hold your hand he says through the fire or through the flood you're his good night we'll see you in the VIP room Amen, amen, Alan. God slid right into my DM, and I love it. What about you for a powerful and potent message tonight? Amen. Oh, Nicole. Yes, it was indeed powerful and potent. And right now, I keep falling in love with Jesus over and over again. He can slide right amen. into my DM anytime. Yes. Of course. How about indeed. you, Alan? That's right. Thank you so much, Nicole. And of course, I must say thank you for joining us from that spicy island Grenada. And we just want to say good night to all of those wonderful people in the Caribbean Union territory. We love you. Of course, we just want to say thank you, everyone, for joining us via cable or even on the virtual space. Tomorrow night promises to be sweeter. We're asking you to just invite and share so on behalf of the entire technical team here, we just want to say good night. Stay safe. God loves you. Good night.